<laughs> 나왜 말이 안 나오지? <웃음> Are you gonna cry? No, I'm always I'm crying internally always. Okay. 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 Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a special guest, Claudine. Woo! This is your first time yeah. on my main channel. Yeah. But she's been in Joan Day so many times. And in Joan Life. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do the frequently asked Q&A for college and I wanted to have Claudine on my channel for this because she went to Harvard and I feel like there is a... <laughs> this is my first time saying it on camera. No, it's weird. So it's really weird. <laughs> All right, where did you go to college and what did you major in? I just revealed that she went to Harvard and I went to UC Berkeley. So what did you major in? I majored in sociology and I did a minor in ethnicity migration and oh. rights. So at our school, we, we don't apply based on major. You have to, you get in and then for a year you take whatever classes you want to take mm -hmm. and then beginning of your sophomore year you declare what we call a concentration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sorry the lighting just went boom i know <laughs> I, fe I felt that i felt the yeah. light cool it, it's it's the sun it's enlightenment <laughs> okay <laughs> But um, I majored in film and media studies and I had two minors in education studies and Korean studies nice. um, it kind of like you I went undecided, oh. but I think you can, you declare your major once you have all the prerequisites down. Oh, wow. And I did that like my sophomore year. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. I really loved what I majored in. How did you decide that that was going to be your major? Yeah, so this is a question that we got asked a lot of. Oh. And for me, I went into college knowing that I wanted to do something in broadcasting, mm -hmm. but I was always interested in like, Korea, because yeah. I'm Korean American, and also education. Mm -hmm. yeah, How about you? Why did you choose those? Um, I chose sociology because I took a class on the dilemmas and inequalities in K through 12 education. Oh, um, and I remember sitting in class, and it was the first thing that like really broke my heart. <laughs> so it really, it just I I was learning about um, the education system in America, and I felt like I actually felt like my heart was breaking mm. and. I wanted to learn more about this because I had never had an emotional response to mm -hmm. my classes up until that point. Mm -hmm. And so then I asked, you know, where can I study this more? And they directed me to yeah. sociology. And then my minor, ethnicity, migration rights. I just took all, all these elective classes that happen to fall under this category oh, it's just, and so i was like oh, i want to take asian american studies and latin american studies and i want to take a little bit about like ethnography and and it just happened to fall under one mm. category and i was like oh maybe i make sense after all yeah because for me it was just i was feeling burnt out and i mm. wanted to take classes that were interesting yeah 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 did you change like majors while you were in college i actually did i well i first thought i was gonna do film uh -uh. and then i took a few film seminars and it was not what i expected yeah and i realized that i wasn't actually interested in film i just thought the idea of it was so sexy yeah. and i was like yeah like let's do film i want to be a film producer and i was like never held a camera i mm. don't really watch that much movies it just <laughs> I like the sound of it, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. once I put myself in it, I was like, yeah, this is mm. all an idea. Everyone thinks that when I tell them that, oh, I majored in film, they oh. automatically think that, oh, it's hands-on, she mm -hmm. creates. No, at Cal, it's yeah. all theory. You start from the beginning of film, mm -hmm. and you take courses where you have to watch three-hour black and white films. Yo! <laughs> I'm sorry if anyone likes it, but they're really no, beautiful. No, 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 but I learned to appreciate them. And um, the funny thing is people were like, oh, it's an easy major. You just watch movies. No. And I was like, being a film major, you are basically mm. an English major and you have to watch films. Yeah, yeah. so um, I do want to put that out there because some people are like, oh my gosh, how could you call yourself a film major when you make all these like, like, I don't know, like my editing isn't like special, mm. but they like that has nothing to do with my film degree. I think you're special. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> did you have a part time job when you're in college? How did you manage your time and money wisely? Okay, you want to go first? Um, yeah, I think. In college, I took just small part-time tutoring jobs mm. to sustain me, like summer jobs, mm. etc. But, I mean, honestly, on money managing, all of our food came from the dining hall. Mm -hmm. So, you only ate out if you really wanted to or had to, but all of that was part of our 
um, yeah, admission factors, you get, it's dining hall is tied in with your housing mm -mm -mm. and about 98% of people live in our housing system. Mm. So you live with the roommates, like random roommates. Right. Um, Mazza. I'm trying to see how I, I know. Honestly, I still think I'm learning money management. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a part-time job. I actually, at one one of the years, I had two part-time jobs. Um, I'm very independent. I don't really show this, but the moment I ha I got a job in college, that's when I just like didn't accept any money mm -hmm. from my parents. So it was really tough because so my classes were like this. All the education courses were in the morning. Uh -huh. And then like my Korean study courses were always at two or three. Mm. And then my film courses were always at night because screening. So yeah. I had like all these random classes. So I made sure I had like part times to fill mm -hmm. in my time. I really tried my best and I did get um, financial aid and scholarships and yeah, I did pull out loans mainly for not for school because that uh -huh. was all like funded, but for like living wise yeah. i did pull out some loans here and there but i just did whatever i had to do in the moment and i did whatever i thought was right yeah. in the moment yeah but yeah that was the hardest thing for me like trying to make money and study at the same time yeah. but it all worked out i think it was great that like all my morning classes mm -hmm. were all education and also i'm a morning person so mm -hmm. it wasn't e it wasn't hard for me to wake up at like seven o'clock in the yeah. morning yeah I mean, you really have to like learn what you want to balance your time and what is necessary mm -hmm. for prioritization. Right. Mata, mm -hmm. mata. And like the on-campus jobs, they pay quite well. Mm -hmm. So I was very lucky for that too. Next question is, how do you make friends in college? And I want to ask, how do you cope with the amount of assignments and work in college while having fun outside of it? Mm. All right. Uh, making friends in... That's... The first semester in college actually I was I kind of lost sense of who I was mm -hmm. I fell into depression because I came from a high school where I knew everybody since like, kindergarten mm. and I was there with my three best friends and I felt like I could do anything and I came to Harvard and I I didn't know who I was anymore because mm. I held on to the fact that I was class president and I did these things, but I remember one of the first meetings, there was about 14 people in my entryway and they asked, oh, how many of you guys were class presidents or like student body president? Everybody rose their hand. And I was like, oh, God, okay, like, dude, that's intense. I just got yeah, chills. I, no, I, and I remember, I think... The thing is, we all looked at each other and we're all like, oh, <laughs> man, because, you know, in high school, that's that's what defined me. Mm. I was like, the you know, the crazy class president. It's true, I because was... actually, we have some mutual friends, and I was like, oh my gosh, I met Claudine. They're like, you know Claudine Cho? She's intense. <laughs> I'm like, I was, I was like, please do explain. <laughs> I was really intense in, yeah, in yeah, high school. Yeah. And, and in college, like, maybe the first week, they talk about, like, Oh, what were you like in high school? But then none of that matters. After. None of it matters. You have to start from zero. Yeah. And I didn't know how to do that without my best friends by my side. Mm. So I would like watch YouTube videos of my high school dances. Like we had rallies. I would watch that a lot. Aww. And I would like call home. And I didn't leave my room for days mm. at a time. I remember I would like go to class with Wearing the same things that I wore like three days in a row with like makeup still smudged. Mm. And I just thought if I'm not these things that I spent, you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. 18 years of my life building up, who am I? And I, that was a question like, who am I if everything that I have, all my shield and armor mm -hmm. is stripped from me? And I, mm -hmm. I couldn't even laugh anymore. My college roommate, she heard me on the phone talking to my best friend and she's like, baby Cho, she would call me baby Cho. And she was like, Baby Cho, I, that's the first time I've heard you laugh. Hmm. And knowing, like, anybody who knows me now, like, you know, like, they were like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You laugh all the time. Yeah. But I, I oh. lost my laughter. Mm. And that was really hard. But the next semester, I just decided to say yes to literally anything. Mm. Someone's like, hey, I noticed you wear red lipstick. Mm -hmm. Can you be the makeup artist for a fashion show? I'm like, yeah. And I go, I've never done makeup on anyone in my life. I go and I'm like, red lipstick. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you you get some red lipstick, you get some red lipstick, everybody gets some red lipstick, and that's how I actually started mm. making friends, because that's one, I know this sounds really, not cheesy, but it just sounds so trivial, but mm. I remember my best friends would tell me, Claudine, when you go to Harvard, make sure you don't lose the red lipstick, mm -hmm. like, always still wear that, and I'm not wearing it now, but she almost but did, I, you know, I always <laughs> do, uh -huh. um, and I just kind of decided to, I decided to stand out because I just, it suffocated me to fit into a mold that mm. I didn't even understand. So, yeah. no, I just started making friends by, honestly, stop trying to be who I thought mm. a Harvard person was mm. because that doesn't exist. Everyone's very, very different. There are no standards there. One of my high school friends knew someone that was going to yeah. Berkeley and you know a lot of my friends were like looking out for me yeah. and they were like oh I want to introduce you to the person I know that's going to Berkeley so I actually went in knowing like a good amount of people like yeah. with mutual friends mm -hmm. um, but freshman year everybody wants to make friends yeah. so it was easy for me to for like sure. just go next door introduce myself and like hey do you want to get lunch or something and yeah. everybody is just so friendly and yeah. I had um yeah i was very i was surrounded by a lot of good people mm -hmm. and then kind of like you i tried to stay involved mm -hmm. in a lot of like clubs fellowships things like that yeah so that made it quite easy for right. me mm -hmm. i think just i think that's great advice that everybody wants to make friends mm -hmm. no one's there being like oh i have a ton of friends i don't need to make any that might be the exterior mm -hmm. because they're trying to protect themselves from mm. rejection True. and friendships and whatnot. But just try to be the first person to be like, hey, do you mind if I sit here? Yeah. Just like, where are you from? And I did that not so much my freshman year, which I regret, mm -hmm. but a lot during my sophomore, junior, senior years. I'm like, yo, I've seen you around campus and I really vibe with you. And they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're weird. I know. I <laughs> That to me, I'm like, what? No, but I would be like, yeah, do you, can I? Okay, can but I also, here? your class was like, how, yeah, how big? Was, we had graduating class was 1600, and we're split into houses, kind mm -hmm. of like Harry Potter, and there's 12. So you see the same people a lot, mm. and you'll just sit and do work with True. them. But a lot of times when I'm like, I would go to see performances, mm -hmm. and I'm like, hey, I saw you in that theater play, I, I was moved. And. Aww. And you just become friends when you decide to reach out to That's them. That's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, wait, what was the second part to that question? It was, I want to ask, how do you cope with the amount of assignments and uh, work in college while having fun outside of it? To be honest, I wanted to have fun first before doing yeah. assignments. <laughs> no, that's real. Yeah, um, but how did I cope with these assignments? So I got in the habit of... So like my first year of college, mm -hmm. I like didn't care. Yeah. Like, I got so many B's. <laughs> like you know, in high school, you were always going for the A's. Yeah, like, yeah. In in college, I was like, all right, A, great, but like at least B. <laughs> like that's yeah. how it was. And I mean, I had fun. You know, like I didn't care so much about the GPA. Like in high school, I was so stressed about like maintaining a certain GPA because I wanted to go to college. Yeah. Um, but in college, I felt like, oh, the job I want to do in the future, it doesn't require me sharing my mm -hmm. GPA. So I was like, that kind of like, you know, calmed yeah. me down a little bit. But yeah, I got in the habit of like making sure I wrote the notes I took in class mm -hmm. and then when I went home I transferred it all back to I typed it all while I was typing I was basically reviewing all of uh -huh. my notes and That's then true. yeah so that was very That's a helpful. good study habit yeah yeah, yeah yeah for sure and then whenever I like had a midterm like mm -hmm. a week before I remembered all those things like so much yeah it was a lot easier for me to study because I got in the habit of doing that I you should get in the habit of doing that <laughs> I, I did not what's that one? What, what makes you not cry at night when you realize you don't know what you're doing with your life second semester of freshman year I pretty much cried almost every single day before I went to sleep mm. and then my junior year I kind of did the same and so I did the same in senior year yeah. too I just cried yeah. and I had roommates so they would all come into my room and they would you know like 
my college friends are like my best friends i'm not even kidding you guys have met yeah. so many of them if you watch joan day but like christine sharon janice joanne like i could name so many great people yeah. that i met in college and they were there for me and mm -hmm. i was there for them too when they had those nights sure. too so like i think crying is okay Mm -hmm. And I got lucky because my friends would come into my room and ask what's wrong and then I would like cry so much and they would cry with me and like I was just so thankful for yeah. those moments actually because I'm like oh these people are here for me they care about me and they're gonna be my friends forever mm -hmm. and that's when I was like I'm so lucky yeah that I have them for yeah sure. I think mm -hmm. I I mean I still break down every like you know once or twice a year like big mm. breakdowns where i'm like oh i thought i was doing this but that didn't quite work out what am i doing now mm. and i remember my senior year the best advice i was given by this dean of harvard business school and this boss ass korean woman mm -hmm. and um she said you know your 20s are the best years of your life because you know, you're on kind of like a roller coaster and six months you'll say, you'll say, I really want to do this. And six months later, you'll be like, oh, that didn't really work out. Yeah. And you try something else and another thing and another thing. And she said, you know, I'm 50 something now and I look back on my life and none of it was planned out. Mm. I thought she was going to tell me you need a 5, 10, 15 year plan because she's in business school. But she told me just make decisions that feel honest to you at that time. Mm. And just take it from there and that this will lead you to here to here to here to here and so I think I can't say what I'm going to be doing in five years but I can tell you at this very moment I know what feels honest to me right now mm -hmm. and I know that today's decision is going to impact tomorrow's and I'll just take it from there mm -hmm. but don't stress yourself out trying to say I'm going to do this thing because I'm we've both done that many times of like I'm going to do this thing and it doesn't work out right. and that's totally fine i feel mm -hmm. like failure is a good thing yeah. because i think that i kind of think of it like they're bumpers on a bowling alley where like you fail in it you hit this bumper and it hurts so hard but it pivots keep you back and yeah. you keep going 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 eventually you'll you'll hit right. the pins i don't know if that metaphor made sense but you so Claudia is gonna write a book. So I'm just, you know, just letting you know. This is why she's so poetic with her words. No, no you'll you'll eventually get there, and mm. it will make sense to you yeah. in hindsight. I I I totally agree with yeah. you on that. What foods remind you of your college days, and what did you eat a lot of while attending college? I know my answer. Okay, you can go first. Okay, so <laughs> before going to college, Taeyang released "I Need a Girl." Oh my god. <laughs> And in I Need a Girl, he sings about kimchi bokkeumbap. And I didn't even like fried rice. And then that song, I'm not even kidding, I'm not even kidding, made me love fried rice, kimchi fried rice. So in college, I had so much of it and I'm <laughs> No, but that like really reminds me of college because all my friends would be like, oh, make me kimchi fried rice because yeah. they liked my kimchi fried rice. It was better than bear ramens. But like restaurants I can think of, like DR, is like a Mediterranean food. Ooh, so good. Hmm. And then Top Dog, I love. I've actually bread. heard. I've heard of Top Dog. It's so good. Yeah. Where's that? There's a burrito place. Though. La Burrita. Is it that one? So good. Yeah. We had Chipotle. We had so many restaurants. Like mm. I gained freshman fifteen and above. I gained seventeen pounds. <laughs> 15 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Seventeen pounds. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I ate so much. And when I had like meal points, bagels. I had two bagels every morning. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Do? It's just because it's a lot of bagels. I, know. I hot sauce reminds me a lot of college. Oh no, honestly, because um, she can't eat spicy food. No, now I can. Yeah, but, like, she can. Yeah, fresh. Just because we ate in the dining hall so often, mm -hmm. and the meal was pretty. It was similar mm -hmm. from day to day. Mm -hmm. So I would just pour Tabasco sauce on everything, and I got heartburn. Um, and so then for a week I had to drink like soy milk. Aww. So hot Is this a sad story? Why is everything I say so sad? Actually, Domino's pizza reminds me most of college because yes, pizza. it was 
because every meeting, when oh. you try to get people to come to your meetings, you would order food, and Domino's was the cheapest, like five, five, five. Yes. So yes. you would just go to random meetings, be like, oh yeah, for sure, sign up for your club, take some pizza and run away. Yeah, pizza. How did you get into your college? So. It changes every year, mm -hmm. and I know for a fact that it's a lot harder to get into my school mm -hmm. now, and I'm sure you feel the same, same way. Um, but basically, what I did before applying to schools is that I wanted to see what was what the average was. Uh -huh. So I think back then, like the average SAT score was like 2100, mm -hmm. and like the average GPA was like non weighed was like 3.8 and like weighed was like 4.3 and above uh -huh. and like there were a lot of these statistics and i was like okay this is like gonna be what i'm gonna go for but except i didn't do that for uc yeah. berkeley i did it for ucla because i really wanted to go to ucla yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um so that's how i kind of like prepared myself for the application mm -hmm. process um but i think what made my application special mm -hmm. was that I am the first person to go to college in America in our family mm -hmm. and like I had no idea about what college was so yeah. when I was a freshman in high school I didn't really care about mm -hmm. college so like my grades were just kind of like it was it was okay but yeah. it wasn't like straight A's but I met up with my counselor and then that's when I was like oh I need to like care about college so that's when I was like all right I'll I want to take these classes and then yeah. I, my GPA every year just went up and That's I think really good. I think Berkeley saw that and they were like okay yeah because I know you can do it it's just mm. if you go with the opposite way that's the problem but yeah progress yeah way. and I think pro it showed progress and like every year I like added like two or three more extracurriculars on top of that so yeah. I was pretty intense in high school too. Yeah. I know you were intense because all my friends tell me you were, <laughs> but yeah. Honestly speaking, I feel like everyone thinks that there's a magic number or there are certain points that you have to mm -hmm. hit, but you never quite know because Harvard to me was the dream too big to dream. And I was like, who am I to think that I could even apply? And mm -hmm. I, I wasn't gonna apply until very last minute. Mm -hmm. My mom told me, you know, you've worked really hard, why not try? Honestly, any opportunity that I saw in high school, I took it. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, I know that a lot of opportunities in high school, you just do it to pad your resume. But mm -hmm. there were certain times when I was like, even for my resume, I don't think I can do this. This just doesn't feel honest yeah. to me. And I think colleges can tell if you can tell a story through the the way, the movement that you make from freshman year to senior year. For and sure. I didn't do much my freshman year in high school, mm. but I slowly started adding things that I cared about, like Korean club mm. or debate and class, like student government. Mm. You can't even guess what they're looking mm. for. I think that it's not a numbers game. It's not even a luck game. Mm. It's, are you the best fit for this college? And is this college a best fit for you? Mm. Because they're technically making an investment in you. Right, you, it's true. They see your potential and they say, can this person grow in our environment? Yeah. Can they be this person that they want to be? And they do case by case basis. So mm. I remember like, I got into Harvard, but I got rejected from a handful of other schools. And I was like, how, like, I really wanted to go to these other schools as well. And it just, I, just wasn't the right puzzle piece for their puzzle mm -hmm. and they weren't for mine yeah. well, in hindsight last question is what's your favorite memory from college also was your college far from your house and how did you deal with being uh, homesick so let's let's, Three answer, questions. The, let's answer the homesick part first yeah. and then end on a happier yeah note. <laughs> homesick mm, yeah I mean thing. you probably had it a lot more than I did yeah uh, I don't you know, I, I mean, distance is distance, mm. but I think, what did I do? People actually did get seasonal depression in Boston because it it got dark at like 4 p.m. in the winter. Mm. It snowed my first time, like having real snow on me. Like, honestly, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, homesickness. I think the important thing is to not get sucked back into Facebook or Instagram and checking in on how your friends back home are doing, that actually exacerbates homesickness. Yeah, sometimes. Because yeah. you're, you're like left out on a lot yeah. of things. So 
for me when I felt homesick, I first started kind of removing myself from my current situation mm -hmm. and calling my friends back home and relying on them. But I think the cure to homesickness is to put yourself even more in the space that you mm. are like explore more parts of the city i explored more parts of boston with right. friends i'd go on adventures and make new memories of where i was now yeah. and so i think that's the best way to cure it because mm. it's i mean there really life is life goes no on other. and you have to you, you have to, life goes on and you have to keep moving with it Definitely. like you really do you can't get left behind mm. for sure for me, um, I didn't get homesick that much because, I mean, I was still in California uh -huh. and because a lot of my friends were from SoCal, mm. um, it's so funny because I met a lot of SoCal people. Yeah. Like, they gravitate college. towards each yeah, other. Yeah, and sure. then we just like, we're like, all right, let's drive home. Yeah. So, like, a lot of my upperclassmen uh, friends, they were like, all right, let's drive down. And mm -hmm. so, we had so many, like, spontaneous trips back home. Like, yeah. it, was, it was really great. And, like, tickets, like, they randomly go on sale, so whenever it was like forty nine dollars, we're like, mm. all right, booking tickets for home. Yeah, and like just sure. book as many as you can. Wait, what's the question? So I, I personally didn't mm. feel that homesick because people around me were home. Yeah, yeah. So we're like, all right, you want to go home? Let's go home. Yeah. So just mm. good friends around you. Yeah, and like I, I remember like, for example, you guys all know Sharon. You know Sharon. Mm. We like drove down together often and we would talk for like six seven hours and that itself would be such a good memory yeah. because you know you're like getting to know this person even more even though mm. like and you i don't know I, those the drives down and also up were always quite memorable yeah yeah God. there are so many good memories yeah. from it's a hard one to answer because you can answer it. i'm thinking when you read the question aloud like a ton of yeah. memories just like like <laughs> just started bubbling up to the surface yeah. I'm like wow I miss all my friends from college yeah I think one of the most mem the most memorable ones are the ones that are actually not if you speak it out loud it's not very memorable at all it's just mm. just good time with your friends um Staying up the, yeah. till 4 a.m. not studying but yeah. talking. <laughs> talking seriously, yeah. talking with your friends late at night or just spontaneous trips out of the city. Also studying abroad. We both studied yeah. abroad actually. The, oh yeah, that's a that's, that's a, a dip, separate, separate video. That's like mm, <laughs> parsing out in my head. But mm. I think the memories that are most memorable is when you take spontaneous you're just like, hey, why don't we just why Drive to the city. Let's yeah. go to SoCal. Or do you want to go get pizza right now? Like yeah. at two o'clock in the morning. He's like, hey, late night. Like we did a lot of yeah. that. Just um, walking yeah. around for me, like walking around Harvard Square, like blasting music mm. or just like rapping down the street. And oh man, just there isn't one for memorable sure. moment. It's just every single one spent with good people. Yeah. So for those of you guys who are applying to mm -hmm. college, enjoy it. I know it's stressful right now, but yeah. it will all be worth it. And for those of you guys who are in college mm -hmm. and are stressed right now, I get it. Yeah. But again, like everything is happening for a reason yeah. and that's just gonna mold you into a better per better version of you, yeah, for right? Sure. So, and also for those post grads, Fighting. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're right there with you. We're right there with you. If I could just give one tip though, when you guys are applying to college, when you're writing your essays, make sure you're doing it in your voice because I've read so mm, many college but, essays and it's, you can tell when someone is not being honest to themselves. You can just, it feels a little off. Right. And if you are getting help writing your essays, get, little amounts of help i don't know how else to explain it it just no i get what you mean you have to write experiences that are honest to you mm -hmm. and can it doesn't have to be or i would say don't write about the moments that you think sound impressive yeah and write about the moment i mean my friend wrote about you know her being half chinese half romanian talked about like dumplings or like really yeah there That's was so a cool. lot of interest or my other friend he wrote about how he walks really slow 
and how he's lived in Tennessee and Korea and like wow New England and how his pace of life has always remained the same so it's oh. about taking mundane try taking mundane experience and extracting it and mm. you don't need to have a dramatic event in your life you don't need a volunteer trip to Costa Rica or wherever right. else because you can't buy memorable experiences mm. like that it's just you have to find be you yeah. in your essays you don't need to have five difficult sat words in one sentence yeah, for like sure. be yourself i mean I, i'm like while you were explaining that i was like what did i write about and yeah. i think i wrote about being korean american mm -hmm. what did you write about i wrote about how what it means to step down as a leader all right it was, it was, this video is so intense i know i'm like <gasps> <laughs> like shake it up i hope you guys found this video helpful um this is a video i really wanted to do for you guys mainly because every time i do like a q a or when i visit my college people are like please do a college mm -hmm. video so hopefully it was helpful yeah. give it a thumbs up if you love claudine and oh. if you enjoyed this video <laughs> <laughs> and um i'll see you guys in my next one thank you thanks Dude, we filmed for so long. How long? I don't think I ever filmed, not every time I filmed with Eddie.